Hey, Billy Strange here in the hobby room. It's late at night. I was working on my Sauber Mercedes C9, as you do late at night, listening and watching some fellow content creators in this space. And people are talking about their March stash editions. And I thought that was pretty cool. I watched them all the way through, got some great kit ideas. I thought I'd do the same. Grab a stack of stuff here to show off. And these are things that are just interesting to me. That's not everything. And if you've watched the live streams, I actually show these kits when I get them in. But I don't really go in deep. So we're going to start with the eBay stuff first. And then we'll move to local hobby shop stuff after that. Uh, in general, this is a Tamiya kit. I don't pay more on a principle, I don't pay more than $60 shipping for Tamiya. There are great deals still to be had on eBay. You have to be patient. And I do the ones now that have it where they you watch it, put it on your watch list, and then they will send you an offer. And I just kind of work things down from there. I always do like searches get the lowest price I possibly can, which happened with this kit. I lost it a few times because I wasn't willing to pay the price. This one happened to go just under the $60 threshold shipped. So let's start off with the Prelude Double X from Honda. Good little box art here. It, it is crushed. This was shown in the listing. Uh, not that big a deal. I'm going to build this. Now I'm a kid of the 80s. This is probably going to seem odd to some people. But I think as time goes on, my generation is going to be more and more into the JDM stuff that's going to bring in more people. And it's going to get us, uh, hopefully, more of these cards. We already get a really good selection as it is from Tamiya, Aoshima, Fujimi, those brands. So we've got a little bit of side box art here. I've done my best to cut the glare down. I actually turned off some lights, tried to diffuse things a little better. There, no copyright that I saw. I'm going to slide it over here. And I've got a tip, so again, we're not, we're not getting a lot of the glare. I've done in the last two days, I've done a lot. I've changed microphones, moved lights around and everything else. Trying to, you know, I'm always trying to improve the experience. So, Honda Prelude. Let's see if we can f quickly find a copyright date. Maybe on the back. Printed in Japan. I don't see one offhand real quick but this kind of stuff really intrigues me because my brain goes into if this was my car in the real world what would i do to the kit or not the kit what would i do to the car i would probably swap out the wheels that kind of thing everything is sealed inside 95 percent of the stuff that i buy is either sealed or sealed inside Every once in a while, I'll, I'll take the plunge. And then we've got, check out, let's see if it'll focus on the wheels here. There you go. Look at those wheels. Nice. Those aren't half bad at all. And they've got a, they've got a plating to them, but they're not chrome. We've got, we've got our tires. We've got a smoked set of glass in here look at how good this looks i am really excited <laughs> look at this looks really cool so this looks like let's call it a curbside this is all molded underneath not that big a deal but yeah this thing is when I, oh, when I showed this on stream, people were really excited about the Prelude. I, and I agree, the Prelude, this is just a great looking kit. We can take a look at the body one more time. Look at, get some of that glare off. There we go. The hood's in there just kind of floating around. This is gonna be great. I'm gonna figure out, I typically go up one, what would be one inch in wheel size. See if we can fit something underneath it. A good set of wheels. Maybe lower it just a hair if we can. Or roll the fenders just a hair. 
this looks like a cool project. So the rest of the kits are over here. I'm going to go grab the next one. Uh, next up is a kit I have chased for years, but have never wanted to pay the price that these things are going for on eBay. Uh, I managed to get this one again, just under the $60 shipped threshold. I was super excited. Just, I love Skylines. Again, Gran Turismo obviously influences that. And the HKS car. You can get this in a Hasegawa. There's, I think there's a few, but the Tamiya one always is a nice kit. Let's kind of roll through the box art on the side here. There we go. Look at that. How about the other side? And it shows, I'm assuming they're showing that this is the 32 that it was based off of. I love, I just, the box art is so much fun. Car series number 135. Wow, yeah. Check those things out. There we go. Those LM style wheels. Molded in black. And I think this is probably going to be another curbside. We've got some decals there. They're those look like they have a little bit of yellowing to them. Not really all that unexpected. Look at the nose. You're going to focus. You're going to try, aren't you? There you go. Look at that thing. How cool is that? 33 is my favorite. 32 would be the next. Glass individual. There's our decals on the bottom. Those are shop. There is, those are all coming apart. They got, humidity must have got to them. They are flaking. Those decals, unfortunately, are no good. Color's great on them, but they are flaking everywhere. I've heard about people clearing these, but these are actually, it's going to be hard to tell. These are actually wrinkling. You can kind of see the wrinkles in it. That's a little bit of a bummer. I'm sure somebody makes an aftermarket set of decals where I can find a better set. I'm buying these things off of eBay used. I know the risk. Uh, that's why I have a threshold as to what I will pay. Oh, well. Still, this is cool. Like, I'm not unhappy about this at all. Again, it's just going to kind of be a thing that you're going to take, take a risk with. Buying these older, older kits. That's not how that went, is it? To fix it. <laughs> this one probably is not going to make sense for a whole lot of people. I didn't even know this was a thing. But this is from Hasegawa. And it's team. I'm going to try my best. Kunimitsu. JTCCSTP. Kiichi. Kiechi. A look at that thing, though. I I love this kind of stuff. Obscure, obscure stuff we would never know about here in the states. Uh, Hasegawa kits. I don't pay more than forty shipped. This one, again, was right, <laughs> was right at the limit. In fact, it might have been slightly over that, but I I couldn't help it. I I <laughs> saw the STP and I'm like, there was an STP. On the side, check the shot out of that car if it'll focus. I'll do my best to hold steady here. You're going to do it. There you go. Look at that thing. <laughs> it's all, I love it. It's awesome. And it's molded in that, like, petty blue color. Look at, look, at the, look at the body, how the body's molded in that color. And the nose is already on the car. Look at that thing. Oh, you've got a, the back end of the Civic is already there, too. Come on. Perfect. Let's see if I can do a better job of remembering how this all goes. So our plastic looks like they even give you some window masking in here. We've got our, what I assume, tire decals. A little dry transfer stuff. And then 
Look at those decals. Look at that. That's going to be well, that's going to be it's going to be pretty hard to do. Uh but look at that. Super cool. Again, it's just another curbside. That's I don't curbsides are just fine with me. Um I like doing the engine detail and the the suspension and all that, but I'm also down for curbsides uh cuz they can be in my opinion they can be just as fun. All right, next up is the first in two Tamiya Indy cars that I always wanted when I was younger and could never get my hands on. Uh, Fox is a little, little ragged. Let's see. Nice little shot of the Nigel Mansell there. Covered up the mic. Sorry about that. Um, decals. I think. We got, yeah, they actually, the person gave us two sets. So here's the old set. We can see these are yellowed and not so great. But the new set looks pretty good. There's still a little bit of issue in a couple spots. Um, might have to find another set or piece these together. Check out those tires. Everything's, everything's in there. We've got some Goodyear. I'm assuming those are dry transfers as well. This has got a, is that black? It's almost like a dark green. It's got to be black. It's got to be the lighting or my lighting. Not a terribly complicated kit, but we've got some engine so we can do a little bit of detail there. Again, I, I buy these kits. I'm not expecting, I typically don't expect the decals to be in perfect condition because even the kit that I'm working on now, the C9, that was sealed and those decals, uh, those decals yellowed. Look at this one, high speed oval. So this, the other one was the road, was a road course version. This is an oval version. I love the Duracell livery. Nice artwork for the engine detail there. If it'll focus, look at that. That's pretty. Love the artwork stuff. So amazing. Let's open her up. I believe I opened this one up on stream, and the decals aren't so great in this one either. Uh, they're not bad. I might be able to salvage these. These are pretty good. Slight yellowing in a couple spots. But all in all, sorry. All in all, not too bad. Same deal. This one's molded in that Duracell, I'll call it Duracell yellow. And the nice thing about to me is typically they will tell you what paints to mix to get the proper color if you need to. And a few people really like this one, the Honda S800. And I think, again, the appeal of these to me is kind of making it my own, maybe a slightly different wheel. Things I would never get to do in the real world. Nice looking chrome, as I would expect. And I believe, to me, even tells you how to tone down the chrome, I think. Look at the little, look at how small. It's a small one. Look at that guy. It's a baby. That's hilarious. And look at how small the tires are. Check that guy out. <laughs> <laughs> Look how small they are. This is fantastic. This is so cool. Oh, wow. This is clear. The top is clear, but they fogged, like, you know, did a finish for, I'm going to assume this is like a vinyl or something like that, canvas or vinyl. That's wild. How cool is that? Look at the body. Look at this thing. It's so small. This is this is awesome. This tickles me. You have no well, you might be able to guess by my reaction. Oh, here's the hard top. That's cool. The wheels are molded in red. Or are those the backs? Those gotta be the backside. I mean, not terribly complicated, but we've got a little bit of engine to work with. That right over the other guy. Our little our little decal set here. Get the glare off of it. There we go. 
and put our put our little baby engine. Look at how small it's. But the detail, I know it's it's going to be super difficult to see, but it's got the Honda in there and everything. Look at that. That's so cool. I love it. I love this kind of stuff. You know, stuff that you wouldn't see many people build is what really intrigued me. And I love race cars, too. But stuff like this, this is cool. Let me move here. A Gran Turismo kid, you get why this is cool. <laughs> Everybody else might not. But I think it is. Are you going to focus? You're going to try it. There you go. It's an FTO from Mitsubishi. This is a Fujimi kit. <laughs> the box art isn't great here. They cut out the car and kind of just slapped it on a background. Eh. This could even be like a promo work. Like this could have been some sort of flyer. It's not great looking. Eh. They say it's a Mitsubishi FTO. Let's take a look. GPX 94 GS. You've got their version of the car right there. I like that. I wish they would have put that artwork as the main artwork right there. It's going to be so hard to see. There you go. I can't stand it all the way up. It's not going to make it. Open it up. Mitsubishi Motors official licensed product. Ooh, look at that body. It's so wide. Compared to the other one, it's so wide. <laughs> I love it. This is great. There you go. Look at that. I really like all oh, that FTO is going to be really easy to get. There's a little FTO on the back here. Let's see if I can get it without the glare. Didn't want to do it. Anyway, there's a little FTO printed on the back there. Uh, we have two different styles of wheels. Check that out. Those are nicely done. That one's a little boogered up. No big deal. That can be cleaned. I probably won't keep it this color anyway. But you get two different wheel choices. I'm assuming that's the difference between like the GPX and the GS. I'm assuming those are two different models. A little bit of suspension. Curbside. That's all right. Tires. Oh, there's the spoiler right there. All right. Next up, this one's kind of an oddball. It's an Entex. I have a few Entex kits. Uh, the reason I grabbed this one is because it's a WR5, which I like the stuff you don't normally see. Uh, you know, box art is fine. Let's open it up. Take a good look inside. We've got a metal axle here. We got for the time. It's so funny when you go from like the Tamiya 20th scale to the 25th scale stuff you don't realize how small everything is it's hilarious i mean little baby tires for the front uh molded in so i would say this is curbside-esque or adjacent which is perfectly fine wheel detail doesn't look too bad uh, decals are in pretty good shape too. So that's a plus. Jody Schechter. Boy, these instructions don't look like anything though. One, two, three. <laughs> yep. <laughs> look at that. You know, take your rivet. It's going to go through. Look at that. We've got. Oh, wow. Well, at least you put the helmet together. Next up is I show this one on screen or on uh, stream rather as well. This is a big one. The Mazda Cosmo Sport 1968 Marathon de la Route. I think I might have opened this one up on stream. Maybe. Not totally sure. Little yellowing in the decal there. Uh, everything else looks excellent. So maybe we just get uh, another set of numbers. The rest of it looks good. Now, I yes, I did open this on my own because I put the glass in its own bag. You've got some screen mesh here. 
And there was one little part bouncing around in here that I didn't want to lose, so I threw that in a bag as well. This happens to be a kit that is not uh, sealed uh, inside. And it looks like they started to paint this, but everything else appears to be here. So for me, not a big deal. Here's our tires. Little, little skinny guys. going to be hard to see through that. But everything else seems to be here. Again, another curbside. Some good uh, gauge detail on the dash there. That's fun. Well, look at those. Look at them wheels. Focus. There you go. You can look at the wheel. Yeah, those look pretty good. All right, next up is a Protar. This is Alancia LC2. Big fan of the more obscure Group C cars. This one's not super obscure. It's not like the Nimrod. I really like the Bullnose 84. Oh, what is that, an 84? This one, I don't know the year. This reminds me of the 85 that had the more angled nose to it, but I won't swear to knowing everything about these cars. The Group C, one of my favorite sports car eras, and the fact that I got this at, like, it was like $32 shipped. And everything appears to be there. Again, these are going to be curbside stuff. Look at the, there we go. That's a, Good shot of the car. This one in particular had like has a little wing that actually goes here and another one that goes here. Uh, body doesn't seem to be too bad. Ooh, that's that's thick. That's heavy. Wow. That's got some weight to it for such a. <laughs> There's not a lot there either. We've got some we got some hose. There's our tires. Let's clean those up a little bit. No big deal. Wheels don't look too terrible. Oh, the glass is inside of there. I'll have to separate that later. And we've got... These look like they're in pretty good shape. Oh, those are in really good shape. Look at those. Man, that looks... Those look wonderful. Wow. I think that's the window masking. It's a decal. That might be a nightmare to put together. Oh, <laughs> uh, I love the Group C era. I, look, I got other Group C cars as well. Uh, but this one's kind of unique. You don't really see uh, a launch of LC2 all that often. So, cool. Great. Car. I cannot believe how heavy this is. Uh, next up, I do not ha know how to pronounce this particular brand. Let's see if it says it on the side. A, it's A R I I. Ari, Ari, Ari. Maybe it's A R two. I have no idea. I like the box art here. I could do without all the bottom part there. The 1975 BMW 3.5 CSL. This would better fit from... I don't think you're going to get decals in this. This one has a similar feel. Not quite as heavy as the other one. And we've got the bottom. I mean, definitely a little more toy-like. Curbside, if you will. But we get to glue on all the Batmobile parts. You can get to put on the doors. That might be rough. I have to separate the glass out of this kit as well, but we've got we've got fenders. How are the wheels? Uh, wheels are going to be hard to see. Those are pretty good. Not bad. Not bad at all. All right, we're to the stock car portion of the program for just a minute. Uh, I always wanted this kit as a kid, but could never get it. I love this Bu the Buicks of this era. I mean, just the ridiculous nose that they have. The bumper is just hilarious. Uh, we're going to open this. This is the first sealed kit. We are going to find out right now if they're any good. <laughs> Hold your breath. And box is faded, not, not in the best shape. These were always kind of weird to me, too. The box art of this era where they put the kit of the car and then kind of touched it up a little bit. Like, I kind of like the idea, but it kind of drove me nuts at the same time. What's really nostalgic for me, though, 
uh, being somebody that built kits specifically in this era is the color scheme. It always gave me a Speed World vibe, if anybody remembers that. Oh, that is green. Woo! That is something. That is green as green can be. I I pray for the person that never painted this and left it that green. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now that we're in trouble. <laughs> the decals, this looks like it got moisture to it, and the decals I can already see are just not going to be any good. Decent looking uh, plating there. Yep. Yep, moisture and stuff got to these decals, so we'll have to find we'll have to find the extra set or uh, an additional set. You're always kind of hopeful that maybe the decals survive, but I could already see that the box it's just if they're in a damp environment at all, like a lot of humidity or anything like that, even the the sealed on the outside is not going to guarantee that the decals are going to make it. Tim Richmond fan. Ever since I was a kid, I actually built this car when I was a kid. The remnants of that I showed on the stream the other day. I found a box of all my old kits that are just all thrashed that I had built when I was a kid. I didn't paint this, uh, I, but I think I sprayed the wheels black. We'd have to look at it another time. But I did do this, and I did all the decals. All right. What's the over-under that the decals are going to be good in this one? Now, I did see that, uh, what, is, what, is, what is the name of it? The JR, the Salvinos. They're doing the old stock car kits. But again, I didn't pay that much for this thing. I forgot it was this deeper red. Why does mine not look like that? I don't remember. Mine doesn't look like that. Maybe it is. Maybe it does. Windows. We'll have to throw those in a bag. Tire. Your parts dancing around inside the bag. This may be okay. All right. Ready? Drum roll, everybody. Usually with the decal, with the instructions like that, that might not be. Hey, hey, I think we're all right. Look at that. That's pretty good. We won. Last eBay grab. Uh, this guy was 17 bucks. Shipped. Sealed. We're going to take a look. Ah. 20 and I got it for 17 shipped. Like I said, there's deals. You just got to be patient. Love the real shots of the cars. Always thought AMT had really good box art because of the angle that they would catch the car. Uh, whoever was their photographer. I really, I like this. Again, this would be something I try to preserve and sit with the car when it's built. Nice side shot there. Get it without the glare if we can. Good shots of the interior. This, I all as a kid, I always appreciated this because they're telling you detailed 358 cubic inch engine. And you get to see all of the detail in the interior, in the engine bay. So you can try to paint these the way they have them done. Uh, my dad goes crazy and does plug wires and everything else. I might get into doing plug wires and stuff. I've never done it before, but that's a, another skill set to learn. Let's open her up. See if we uh, have another good decal set. AMT, as far as I remember, they were always molded in gray. I don't recall them being molded at this time, at least in any other color. Because I had a few AMT kits. I had the Maxwell House and the Sunoco 94. I think, who was that? Was that Sterling Marlin or Terry Lumani? I don't remember which one. That looks good. Again, we've got glass just kind of hanging out everywhere in something. Hey, you can uh, remember the blue printer? I think they came in like white boxes, if I remember. I remember Dad and several of our car club, model car club people back in the day when I was a kid that would get the blue printer stuff, I think. Uh, we might be okay. Ooh, those look good. Oh, 
Those are nice. Heck yeah. I kind of like that artwork there. That's cool. For the instructions, I like that. Hey, <laughs> this one tickles me. Look at that thing. It is, if I can get the glare off of it, a Nissan Sunny truck. Late version with chin spoiler. Oh, look at our little buddy. Look at the... <laughs> Got our glass. There's our chin spoiler, I'm assuming. Our chrome. We got our stripes. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. That must be like a logo for the Sunny Truck or something. I'm not that familiar. I don't know. And uh, looks like pretty much the curbs. Oh, here's the other. Oh, you can put in a different grill. Oh, that's cool. Looks like you can put that in or... You have the option, and it's hard going to be hard for you guys to see, but it's right there. There's another grill option. Bed, you could, geez, you put in the lining of the bed and everything. Again, Tim Richmond, and I've never opened one of these. I said on the live stream I didn't have any of these kits before, uh, which is not true. I actually have the Grey Ghost. When I had my hobby store, uh, these kits were just coming out or had been out for not too long, uh, the manufacturer that is, and I saw the Grey Ghost and I was like, I'll try that. I don't think I even opened it. That reminds, it, that reminds me of the Protar kits, so just a little bit heavier duty stuff. And that's pretty good detail and all that stuff there. That looks nice. Again, I've never opened one of these kits before. and. Ooh, those are nice instructions. Look at that. Look at how reflective that is. That's pretty. Wow. Those are nice. All right, last one. Love the AJ Foyt. I'm hoping maybe we'll get an AJ Foyt that is like the Oldsmobile with the Copenhagen or something. That would be. That would be super cool. Again, as far as I know, these are from the monogram stuff. Could be misinformed, but that's what I understand at least. Let's get to... Yep, nose looks great. Same thing. Chrome looks... Detail looks nice. Let's just kind of take a look and see what our decals look like here. Those are amazing. Those are so nice. <laughs> I am really impressed by the quality of the decals in these kits. That's impressive. And that will do it. I know that that's a long one. If you've made it this entire road with me, thanks for putting up with me. I just, I had a lot of kits to share. And hopefully you saw something that might inspire you. I've got several ideas for a bunch of different stuff. So thank you so much for watching. You've been great. I've been strange. Take care, and I will catch you in the next video.